And I, I always think as well, like most garages charge you £60 an hour. Mm -hmm. But I think they charge you more for a server. It doesn't take them that long. It takes, if they know yeah. what they're doing, they do it in less than an hour. Wow. Now, in my experience, an easy job is very seldomly easy. No, this will be. This will be, he says. Famous last words. <laughs> Slightly hey guys, welcome back to my channel today. Uh, so today I've woken up with a plan of saving myself a few hundred pounds because I'm actually going to be servicing my car for the very first time. Now the UK average for servicing a car, a full service that is, is around £205 per service. So I've actually got a colleague who is into cars and he has basically been servicing his own cars for years. So I'm about to get a crash course guys in how to actually service my car as I've never done this before. Now the hope is that as the years go on and as I get better at this, I'll be able to service my own car and save myself hundreds of pounds. So I recently went on the Euro Car Parts website and I actually bought all the necessary things that we need in order to service this car. Now if you know me, you know that I'm not about buying brand new cars. So I've got this old 2007 Ford Focus. I got all of the things that I needed to service this car for around £64, which is a really, really good price. Anyway guys, if you like these money saving tips that I'm providing, please don't forget to smash that like button as well as click that little bell notification icon so every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Let's get into the video. So that's one way to get the car on the ramp. When I was a kid, all my mates had a kept car, some body kits on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, so you, Got to yeah, get over the, the bumper. On as long as you can get to the uh, the sump. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that's perfect actually. That's I just want to make sure I can get those two off before I start anything out. Yeah, oil, oil filter. Oil filter. Air filter. Air filter. Spark plugs. Spark plugs. Yeah, that's it. Today. That's it. The oil filter as you go under there. Oh, that black round thing. The fact that I actually knew what that looks like. And that's uh, that's how easy that is to get to and change. Here is your engine so that's where all your oil sits, right? Okay. So at the back of there mm -hmm. is a bolt. Okay. And that bolt there is where the oil, the oil is going to come out of. So that's called your sump plug. Got so you. that's how easy it is to change your oil. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got your oil filter and your sump plug and that's it. That's all you've got to do. Do you know what, what's blown me away about all of this? Is that how cheap I was able to get all of them? Yeah, it's ridiculous. The, the, the service. And I, I always think as well, like most garages charge you £60 an hour. Mm -hmm. But I think they charge you more for a service. It doesn't take them that long. It takes, if they know yeah. what they're doing, they do it in less than an hour. Wow. Now, in my experience, an easy job is very seldomly easy. No, this will be. This will be, he says. Famous last words. <laughs> okay. Muscle time. <sighs> yeah, famous last words as I <laughs> said. <laughs> the tools are like that, and they're going to put under quick. Mm. And that's what you ever need. So whenever you're actually servicing your car, one of the main things that you need is the right set of tools. Um, it's well worth investing in something like this. A lot of times you can actually pick it up online for a reasonable price, brand new, or if someone's actually selling off their old ones. So this little container here that you got is to catch the old oil then? Yeah. Cool. How do you dispose of the oil? Uh, put it into a, uh, when we've changed the oil, I put it into your oil thing and then I take it to the tip. Cool. Oh, there it is. That's what I wanted, so that's good. So is it starting to budge now? Yeah, that's what I wanted to know, as long as it starts to budge. And then the oil filter is the same thing. This is a really nice oil filter, this is. And bear in mind, I'm not actually taking this off yet. Mm -hmm. I'm just making sure it. I can before oh, okay. I put that, because that stuff that we're going to put in the oil, mm -hmm. uh, what it does is it thins the oil out, uh -huh, so it'll get and really it helps to clear it, clear everything. So it, it does a real good job of cleaning your engine, basically. Uh, but the side effect is, is it it destroys your filter. So if you then couldn't get your filter off and you put new oil in, that oil wow. would be instantly ruined. Got you. Wow. So. That's why I always check, and again, it's just, it's it, it will come off. I know it will, even if it takes me hours, it'll come off. But uh, I don't start until I can definitely get it off. But when when I checked it, I don't know much, but I wasn't impressed with the amount of oil well, that was in there. Well, when it so. comes out, you're gonna you're gonna. Do you know when you last serviced it? 
No. See, when you get it out, you're going to know when that is because the oil will tell you. So already what I'm seeing is you've got very brown oil, mm -hmm. which is which means it's very, very, very old. Um, okay. so yeah, we'll see what happens. Inside your engine, you've got these valves mm -hmm. and they have to open and close. And uh, inside your engine, the channels that the oil go down actually get quite small. And so if they get blocked, um, it can it can be like a major disaster for your engine, okay. and and what this does is it breaks your oil down and it makes it uh, like thinner than water, okay. and uh, it basically turns your engine into oil cleaner, and it will clean your system out. So once you drain it, it unblocks all those little channels, mm -hmm. and it gets more of the oil out of the system. So it's really really worth having this stuff. So that pour straight in there, mm -hmm. and now we run the engine okay. for 20 minutes. And what that would do is uh, help it circulate around. Uh, a car plate will charge you 20, 25 pounds for that, yeah. and they're charging you for basically this, which they, which they probably get cheaper. Yeah. Uh, and they're charging you for the fact they have to leave the car running. Um, so. Oh. A lot of the time, cars come. They, they'll say, "Oh, do you want your oil flush?" And they'll, they'll charge you like twenty-five quid. And they'll say petrol system cleaner as well. And all that is is putting Reddit in your in, in your thing. What's Reddit? Uh, so Reddit is. This is Reddit. Okay, I've seen that before. And uh, what it does is your car, um, your car's either got either got a, a carburetor who's really old, mm -hmm. like some of my motorbikes in the past have had carburetors. Yeah. And what happens in a carburetor is the the fuel. Mm -hmm. Gunks up, fills that carburetor with this white gunk. Yeah. So this will clear that. But with a modern engine, um, you've got injectors, and the injectors um, they get gunked up. And so what happens is, is with Red X, a Red X doesn't burn, so it, it, it sits on the injector and it cleans. It's got like a cleaning engine in, and so it makes the injector go from sort of like, sort of like spitting to like psh, working perfectly again. <laughs> now if the injector is working perfectly, your fuel economy goes up. Oh, uh, right. And also the lifetime of your engine. So I put it in. I try and do. I I always buy when it's on offer. Two pound, mm -hmm. and two pound will give you four. Uh, so once you you, know, you you fill your, your fuel tanker, yeah, and you put a quarter of the bottle in there, and you just keep doing that religiously. So how often do you do that? I do it every time I fill up. Ah. I do it every time I fill up. Every time you put fuel in there, you put yeah. that in there. But it technically when, I, when it, it costs two pound a bottle, so it technically costs fifty p. Yeah, fifty p every time I fill up but it makes my car run better. And technically, you could all, you, you, your fuel economy could be going up. That 50p, you could be saving on fuel. The local garage basically said that it would have costed me around 250 pounds yeah, um, for a full service. And I thought to myself, yeah, I could go there and get them to do that, but why not sort of learn how to do it myself? And it could, it could be a thing where there's something that I can't do, and then later on, I take it to them and pay like half the price and say, oh, can you do this for me? But if I can change the oil, do the spark plugs, um, what else? The filter. These are things that they normally do and charge, you know, an arm and a leg. So why not do it yourself, really? And if you buy these simple tools, you can do that forever. So like I said, when I bought this car, I think around 2015, um, it was already an old car, obviously. And I didn't want to spend a lot of money on a car. I just wanted to run around. This is when we lived in London. Um, and when I bought this car, it was actually from a guy who drove out of London to somewhere really far. I forgot where it was now, something like Leeds or, or further afield. And he bought this car really cheap and then drove it to London and basically sold it for me for probably double the price. <laughs> what a legend. How much did you pay for it six years ago? Six years ago, I paid around 1500 for it. 1500 quid six years ago? Yeah. I mean, you worked that out, that's, what's that, two, £250 a year that you yeah. owned it? Yeah. So, I mean, that's nothing, is it, for a car? That's less. That's less than fifty pound a month. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> no, it's brilliant, man. And if you have to spend a little bit of money on it every now and then, I mean, this yeah. car literally will last you forever. It will last you forever. Um, if you look after it, and you service it, and you keep on top of things. I mean, things like servicing the engine. If you do that every six months, yeah, you're, you'll never have a problem with your engine. Is that the air filter you're checking. Yeah. So this is where the. Uh yeah, let's see. Well. We're gonna see if um, if it's if we have got the wrong one. It's not the end of the world if we have. So what does the air filter do exactly, and how does it benefit the car? So your um, so the car 
needs air to run mm -hmm. to, 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 for the engine to combust. So if you've got a really nice clean air filter, uh -huh. then your car is going to suck in exactly the right amount of, of air that it needs mm -hmm. uh, to run. So as the air filter gets used and blocked up, and you'll see when we take this out now, it'll be black. Okay. Um, that's the air filter slowly gets blocked, and so your your engine stops bringing in all the air it needs, um, and, and it, it can lead to, to your car not running properly. So and less efficient, basically. Yeah, basically. So it, it, it can have a, a big impact on your and your on your on the performance of the car, and also the um, fuel consumption. Service is the best way to uh, improve the performance of a car, and you often see people, you know, trying to improve the brake horsepower of a car. Well, one of the best ways to do that is to service it. Yeah. We've got the wrong air filter, so that's a bit annoying. And again, this was just bought on Euro car parts um, for like a fraction of the price that you would probably pay the garage to get it for you. So this is a sign for me. So this, this happens a lot when you go to a garage, yeah. where they'll just take the old filter out and put the new one in. Mm -hmm. You've got all this dirt in here, right? So when you change mm -hmm. your filter, I always give this a really, really good clean. Now if I can, if I can, I will unbolt this completely and I'll actually wash it. Mm. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a bit of a pain to actually get out. So can't you just like um, get a, a little container of water and yep, wash it that's and exactly run out? What, that's exactly what we're going to do. There's a hole down there, so yep. it's not going to probably go through. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to give it a really, really good clean. So when you do oil on your car, yeah, mm -hmm. take this off first. Yeah. The reason you take this off is because um, this way, when you unbolt everything, there's no air locks. There's no, so like if you if you leave if you leave the lid on. Yeah. You, it, it can create an airlock and keep oil trapped yeah, in the yeah. system. So you take that off, go underneath the car, make sure you've got your oil something in place. Uh, this is the messiest job. Very quickly, oil comes out. Mm -hmm. And what it does is because it's full, it goes like that. So you have to put your, your sump forward to try and catch it. Okay, got you. Now, if, pressure. You do, if you're doing this on a windy day, you will get oil in your face. Now, there's a there's a... There's a trick here, right? If you if your hand's here, mm -hmm. you're gonna burn it in oil. So you wanna put your hand around. I ain't got enough room to do that here. So I might have to drop my bolt in oil, which I don't really wanna do, but I might have to. So I'm really slowly undoing it. I'm waiting for that oil to start coming out. Okay, we, we've got oil. So my, the bolt's off now. Oh, Ooh. it's got me. So there we go. So that's what I mean, you see it comes out like an R. Yeah. So you have to sort of keep an eye on it and you have to bring the oil back with itself. I didn't drop my, uh, I didn't drop it. I did get it on my hand there. Do you know what? I'm going to invest in getting you some of those um, gloves. disposable gloves. Oh mate, every time I do anything on a car, I always go, oh, next time I'm going to use gloves. Shocking. And I never do. <laughs> ah, so so how, how do you say that sump? Yeah, it's a bit dirty around the edge. So we'll clean that up before it goes back on. Again, this is just where people have serviced your car in the past and they've just unbolted it and bolted it back up and haven't decided to clean it off. So you get this like old oil sticking on it and I'm going to get all that off. Do the oil filter. So we make sure the oil uh, catches in the right place. Mm -hmm. Right, so same again, right? So you, you turn it really slowly, turn it, oil start dripping out of it, mm -hmm. like so. I'm just going to leave that bit empty. But it's one of those things that over the years I've known it's easy just to do it that way. So I really, there's a lot of rust on right. it. Um, so yeah, apparently it's, it's because it wasn't sucking enough air in. Mm -hmm. uh, it also could be could, because somewhere along the line there's some, uh, you know, some water's got stuck in there. Yeah. Okay, so, so once we've done that first one, I'm just going to clean this off before I put it back in. I mean, I'm super curious to see how much better it's going to drive and I hope that that sound yeah. that it was making will be fixed because of the service. Yeah, if you not, hope so. Yeah, if not, I'll have to take it in for them to have a closer look. I mean, maybe do you know it. what? It's, it doesn't sound as worrying as I first thought though, the mm. sound, to be honest. Okay, so. That click yep. means you know it's back in place. Well, they meant to be this hard, it was just sort of... Oh. No. Rusted oh, shot. that's not good. So that has actually pulled your um, your cover off. The spark plug. Yeah, it's off your lead, which is really frustrating. Ah. So 
so that has actually pulled that out of the disappear okay? Oh, okay, got you. Which might have answered that question about whether we need to get new distributor, uh, new leads. I'm quite surprised actually that spark plugs aren't as standard anymore. Yeah. Um, but it makes sense why they're so old and rusty because if that was changed at the last service, surely it wouldn't they have been this bad. They'd look brand new. In regards to the spark plugs, is there like good quality versus just average or? Well, this is a funny thing, right? It used to be, yeah, massively. But uh, nowadays, not really. So you can get. Um, your more premium ones, which are going to cost you about £15 each. For, the, for like you driving round, you're not going to notice a difference. That one there, look, mm -hmm. you can see one of the reasons why it was so hard to get the top off is because the top is so damaged. So that again just tells us the age of the plug. That is a very old spark plug, that is. Right, I always give it a real good wipe off. Uh, a little bit of fluff from a rag ain't going to hurt it. So you put the sump back on to stop yeah. oil from running out once you yeah, put it back so in. Yeah, it's not dripping out anymore, so it's it's definitely empty. So finger tighten first. Mm -hmm. Now this is one of the only things on a car where I ever say you do over tighten it for obvious reasons. For obvious reasons, but I'm not doing that yet. Yeah. But I haven't forgotten, so don't think I'm mental. So now I'm going to put my oil uh, filter back on. So when you put your oil filter back on, you're meant to fill it up with a little bit of oil first, which is great, yeah. Mm -hmm. But the only problem with that is. When you fill something up, you fill it up that way. And when you put it on, you have to do that. Uh, and yeah. so it sort of goes everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I don't do that, okay? And some mechanics will be like, Ugh. but I don't do that because I don't like getting oil over myself. But what I do do is I do put the oil around the rubber to, uh, to make sure you get a proper seal on that, on that rubber. You just put oil around it. That's it. Yeah. These are aluminium. Mm -hmm. If you don't put them on straight, they're so easily cross threaded. So you have to make sure you put it on perfectly straight, which again, it's a really obvious thing, isn't it? But I, I make sure it's straight in line here. Yeah, just turn it straight away. They're so easily cross-threaded. It's just like the sump bolt. If it comes and done while you're driving, then you're going to lose all your oil, aren't you? Mm -hmm. But uh, you'd be surprised how tight you can get it with your hand. I always go tight, then one little bit more. So I go hand tight and then one little bit more. And I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to get it off again. So look, we can look at the quality of oil now. And because it's sunny, easier to see so your oil is brown which is dirty which is <laughs> dirty oil yeah, um, it's not good. <laughs> oil should be golden um, yours is brown at the moment which mm. isn't the best color what about the, the, the sump bolt now when do you tighten it now cool. yeah now 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 I was just looking for my bolt and is it always the same size or do they vary the bolt well this is another reason why I check because I've had it before because of Vauxhall, Vauxhall have got a, uh, you have to buy the, the, the tool off them. So I've put the cleaner in and found that out, I had to go and buy the tool. Tightening for this is one really, really good. Ooh, what? Ah, that'll do me. I don't want to go mad. Yeah, like you said, it's got to come back off. Yep, job's a good and amount of oil. Like, a, it, it's called a, a dry. Uh, capacity and you literally can just google this and oh, I'll google everything yeah google's my friend Ford Focus Z-Tech what engine size 1.6 1.6 I'm just about oil capacity so it says it needs 4.25 litres of oil <laughs> and there's a measurement there oh that is sick so I'm gonna go all the way down to a thousand mm -hmm. once I get to a thousand I'm gonna stop let it settle measure it yeah, so that's what it's supposed to look like. Nice and golden, sort of clear, yellowy. And this is what it's not supposed to look like. Wee, brown slur. And then again, it's a good, like, if it smells like fuel, you know you've got a fuel problem. Mm -hmm. if, it, if it's got uh, white specks in, you know you've got a water leak somewhere. Mm -hmm. So your oil can tell you a lot. Overfilling your oil is bad. Better to be under than over. Okay. Um, well, what happens if, if it's over? No, what happens is, is it sits in the sump and then you've got your, um, your, your pistons going up and down, right? Mm -hmm. So if your oil's too high, then your piston sits in oil. And as it goes round and round and round, it oxidizes your oil mm -hmm. because it, the, 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 that makes oxygen go into the oil yeah. and it makes all your oil fluff up and it means you've got no oil, it makes all the oil oh, fluff up. Oh, got you. And so it does the same thing as having no oil in there, which is... That's crazy. It is crazy. Okay, so I'm going to stop when it gets to four litres 
knowing I need to put a little bit more in. Mm -hmm. But I want to run it first, and uh, I want to I want to make sure I get out on level ground. And how often do you service your car each year? Because they, they sort of advise you to do like a half service. So half the half year. service is for it depends how much you're driving. So if you're doing ten thousand miles a year plus, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely half service your car. If you've got a diesel engine, definitely half service your car. If if you're only if you're doing less than ten thousand miles a year, petrol engine once a year is fine. Yeah, do a really good service once a year. Um, if you've got a diesel engine, diesel's run dirtier, mm -hmm. so it's, it, it's worth changing it. Yeah, it's, it, it seems like a no-brainer. The hardest thing is the effort to actually do it, but once you know what you're doing, and you, if you've done it once, you've got all your tools for it, yeah. the second time... That hasn't taken us long, and we've had a lot of faffing about as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's, that's done now. Yeah, so we need to get some distributor caps, change the filter, because we've got a flat one instead of a cylinder one, and yeah, pretty much done. See what I love about this is the fact that this would have costed me 46, almost 47 quid. Yeah. But you put in a code online. 71. And you get 60% off. Buy the stuff yourself and then take it to the garage and then they'll just charge you the labour rather than having to go for them to get the parts is another great tip. Yeah. And a lot of garages won't do it. A lot of garages won't do it, but like the smaller garages will. Hmm. Because they know that they'll be doing a markup. Well they want the money, yeah. And what, what happens with leads over time is the, um, the metal oxidizers. So do you remember the one we took out yesterday? Yeah. And what colour it was? Well, that's what colour they should be. They should be like a golden colour. Mm. So, it, you know, that, that, that alone shows you the wear. Right, so this is really important when you do these. You have to do them in order because you don't want to mess up your time and sequence. Cool. So, I always start with the furthest away. Okay, so, so um, it's pretty obvious which one it is, Let but I always check. There we go, that's perfect. So we know the right ones. And then... And then it's just literally... Yeah, just pop on. Easy as that. Easy as that. I was reading a review and some people were saying that, oh, they're too long. But I suppose because they're generic, different cars, yeah. you know, will have different lengths. But we'll sort that out in a sec. I mean, I could definitely do that. Reminds of when you're organising your desk set up at home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There you go, just to keep them down. Is it the right one? It looks like it's the right one. So oh, we haven't got the one to compare, but can you see how clean it is? Yeah. So when you when you see a new one, you always see how dirty your old one was. I don't think this car has been serviced for a while. Well, I don't think a lot of these components have been serviced for a while. They probably changed the oil. I mean, what you've shown me so far, in terms of me having a go next time, the hardest thing is going to be getting up on the ramp and you know undoing the knots for the oil i actually went to college when i was a kid for mechanics i only went for a few months mm. and uh, one of the reasons i only went for a few months is because the uh i was doing the level two course and it was so easy for me i could yeah. just do everything because a lot of it is just common sense job done Brilliant. Start the beast. so she lives <laughs> moment of truth here Concerned. Must be the spark plugs then. Hmm. Not what we wanted to see. Maybe they're not pushed on properly. No, 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 it's cut girl. <laughs> That's very strange. <laughs> no. For a second there, I was worried. So you're telling me that it's not started? Let's find out, let's find out, let's find out. Because <laughs> that's really cool if that's a thing. I've never heard of that in my life though, to be honest. But I'm sure they've started cars with bonnets open yeah, before, I was like say, you I've break never down heard at that the road. Life, but if it doesn't start again, then it definitely is having the bonnet up. That's 
so random. It's so random. And then a second ago it wouldn't start. I haven't heard that sound. You know the only thing I can think of right like, is, which is uh, because we change the spark plugs completely, whether or not there's some sort of like Reset. film over them or something. So like, yeah, it takes a, a, a couple of sparks to get it going. But it, I mean, it's really sweet now. Come on, old girl. Yep, so she's all serviced and just had a nice wash ready to be delivered back to my wife. So, hope you enjoy the car, Saf. A lot of sweat went into getting it up and running. 